Hello, I'm Dr. Chen Xu. I'm an aesthetics doctor and aesthetics business mentor. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 marketing strategies for aesthetic practitioners. Having mentored so many aesthetic practitioners over the last few years, one question that I get asked all the time is, how do I get more clients? There are a lot of common misconceptions when it comes to marketing. A lot of people automatically assume that marketing means advertising. But paid advertising is only one aspect of marketing. The purpose of marketing is to generate you new leads for your business. And there are lots of different ways to do this. I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 most commonly used marketing strategies. These 10 marketing strategies will actually work in any business. But depending on what business you're in, some will work better than others. And the thing with aesthetics business is that it's, it's a very specific niche. And if you take advice from a marketing agency who um, don't understand the world of aesthetics and they're used to marketing for other types of businesses, then the marketing strategies that they suggest for you may not work as well. So this is why you need to have a, a good understanding of what marketing is all about and what are the different marketing strategies so that you can make the best decision for your business. So let's kick things off with number 10, which is friends and family. When I say friends and family, I don't mean you should go around offering Botox and fillers to everyone because that wouldn't be a good idea. And I think actually even if your friends and family wanted to have treatment from you, just be really careful whether you actually do the treatment for them or not. What I do mean is your friends and family, those who are closest to you, are the ones who are most likely to support you in your business journey. So do make sure you get them on board, explain to them what you're doing, and teach them something new. Once they gain a certain level of trust um, of what you do, then they might start to refer their other friends to you, and there might be other kind of more distant relatives who might benefit from your services. So this is what I mean by friends and family, is not necessarily to see them as clients, but to see them as ways that you can potentially increase your network and to reach other potential clients. Ask them to spread the word for you. Number nine is social media. Nowadays, social media seems to be the first thing that people turn to when they start a business. And I'm not saying this is the wrong thing to do. You know, all this comes down to what exactly you're hoping to get out of your marketing strategies and out of your business and how quickly you want to grow. In order for social media as a strategy to work for you, you have to have a plan. You have to know exactly what you're doing. And there are some tricks behind it that, that you need to know because you know most of your competitors know or they're hiring a social media manager who knows these tricks. There's nothing wrong with you setting up your social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever other platform you choose. But when you are very new in business, I would say focus more on your actual business. Just have the accounts there ready. Don't spend too much time initially posting things because if you just go into it blindly and just post things for the sake of posting, I can guarantee you you're wasting a lot of time and you won't get any clients out of it. Number eight is start a blog. This can seem quite daunting if you're new in business, new to aesthetics, and you might be thinking, well, I don't have anything to talk about. I don't know enough. The thing with blogs is that it's quite personal and actually the more specific you can get, the better. The blogs don't have to be very long, it could just be 500 words. The benefit of having blogs on your website is that it is indexed by Google and it's completely searchable. On top of having a well-written blog article, if you can optimise it for the search engine, so having the keywords in there and having the right tags and titles and so on, then whenever someone types in something that you've mentioned in your blog, your blog will come up in the searches. And obviously all this is, is organic traffic. So the more traffic you can drive to your website, the better. There are lots of other clinics and websites who all talk about the same kind of services that you offer. So by having some blogs, it just makes you stand out. It makes you unique and different to other businesses. So blog articles are a good way to, uh, to start showing people who you are, you know, what you believe in, your personality, the, your knowledge, and they really help to establish you as the expert in your industry. Number seven is writing guest blogs or articles for other magazines. Once you've started writing a few blogs, well, don't just stop there. You know, write some articles and blogs for other people's websites. For businesses who recognize the value of blogs and perhaps don't have enough of their own content, they will really welcome guest blogs. 
if you offer to write a guest blog for them, not only is this going to expose you to, to new clientele, um, but also the links that you'll get from other websites to your own will increase your Google ranking. And this is one of the ways to increase your organic ranking in Google. Number six is Facebook ads. Most marketing agencies would say Facebook ads is the number one go-to solution to get new clients. Um, and uh, they will probably put it top of their list because so many people are on Facebook. The reason I put Facebook ads as number six is because I believe in aesthetics. The value or the effectiveness of Facebook ads can be quite limited. If you just use Facebook ads to try to advertise your treatments, then first of all, it's very likely to get blocked depending on what kind of images you use and what kind of words you use in your ad copy. And secondly, you know, what we do with uh, injectable treatments is quite personal and it, it does take a lot of trust. A lot of people wouldn't scroll through their, their Facebook and, you know, see an ad for injectable treatment and just book there and then. So it's a, it's a very big commitment, it's a big ask from people who, who don't know you. So these are the, the cold leads. Later on, once you've tried some of the other marketing strategies and have started to get some clientele, started to build up a bit of a reputation, then doing some Facebook ads will actually make you look more credible. So I would say this is something that you should reserve for a little bit later um, and, uh, and not right from the beginning. Number five is Google Ads. Similarly to Facebook Ads, I believe that there is a role for Google Ads but when you are new in business and when you're still quite a small scale, Google Ads can be very costly and depending on where you are, you could be competing with some of the other big clinics that are near you, so you're not going to get a lot of good quality um, leads that come through. Now, the reason I've put Google Ads above Facebook Ads is because of the, the nature of the advertising. So Google Ads is intent marketing, where people are typing in their problems into Google and the ones that see your ad are the ones who are looking for a solution to their problem. Interrupt marketing means people are scrolling through their feed and they're, they're not looking for anything in particular and they suddenly see an ad pop up amongst their feed. The ad pops up depending on their likes and their previous behaviour on Facebook, um, but they don't necessarily have any intention of buying anything. On the whole, Google Ads are more likely to give you the leads who are more serious about doing something. You know, if you're going to spend money on any type of advertising, I would say Google Ads will be better than Facebook Ads. But if you are quite new to business, then I would recommend that you focus on the top four marketing strategies that I'm going to be talking about next. Marketing strategy number four is events. The benefit of doing an event is when people come to see you in person, they're much more likely to buy into you. You will always be the best person to sell yourself. Because of the nature of the aesthetics business and it takes a lot for people to trust you, I would say events are a must. Hosting an event might seem quite daunting if you're quite new to business or if you're a bit shy and don't like public speaking. But events don't have to be big for it to be effective. And actually for aesthetics related events like skincare events, having relatively small sizes, it, it works much better because it's more intimate. And once you get people in front of you um, and you can actually talk to them in person, answer their questions, they are a lot more likely to buy into you and then to book for your consultation. If you want to build up your reputation, if you want to get good quality clients, then you can't just rely on paid advertising. You actually need to um, post some of these events and actually see, per see people in person and also use that as a qualification process as well. By doing these events, you are more likely to attract the right kind of clients that you know, who will become loyal clients for life. Number three is networking. This is my favorite marketing strategy because I'm more of a people person. I just, I love uh, meeting new people, I love going to events, and I love hearing about new ideas. If that doesn't sound like fun to you, yeah, you know, perhaps you're a bit shy and perhaps you've never done this before, it actually isn't so scary. And there are a lot of people that I meet at networking who are naturally a bit shy, so it doesn't mean you can't use this as a strategy. And I always say to the 
practitioners who I mentor that when you're first starting and you're trying to get your first or second client, actually networking is the best strategy to do that. If you do it right, it is possible to meet someone who then immediately decides to, to come and see you for a consultation, who then might have a treatment. From networking, you can make new friends, you can meet new clients, you can get referrals from other business owners, um, and you can form collaborations with other business owners even meet potential investors. The value of networking doesn't just come from those people that you meet in the room, but also the other people that those people know. So networking is mostly a long-term strategy. It's about nurturing the seeds of potential. And building this network is so valuable because it will form the foundation that your business is going to grow from. I do networking quite a lot and I don't actually see a lot of aesthetic practitioners out there. In order for you to build a solid foundation so that your business can grow steadily and long term, you must build a good network. So go networking as soon as you can. My second favourite marketing strategy is cross referrals and collaborations. Following nicely from networking, some of the business owners you meet at networking will be really good people that you can collaborate with. Collaborations don't just come from nowhere and you need to collaborate with people who are on the same page as you, people who you can trust. You know, you're not going to meet these people sitting in your clinic. So the only way to meet these people is to go out networking, to attend events and to meet other business owners. Once you've done networking for a while and you've built up these collaborations with people, you will find that you, you, you will start to get referrals in from all these different contacts and they will all become promoters for you. So when you reach that tipping point, then you won't necessarily have to do a lot of networking or even pay advertising. Just the referrals that you're getting from, from your collaborators will be steady enough to keep your business going. If you look at the really successful businesses, no one has done it completely on their own. So if you go into your business from the beginning with the right mindset of wanting to collaborate, wanting to grow your business bigger, wanting to build a strong foundation, then that is what's going to happen. Things like networking and you know, building these relationships and forming collaborations, they do take time. But if you invest the time into it, it, it definitely will yield you a lot of results that you know, sometimes you can never imagine the results that you will get. The number one marketing strategy for aesthetic practitioners and for any business, in fact, is to turn your existing customers into promoters and ask them to refer their friends and family to you. Although most happy clients would gladly refer you to their friends and family, it is quite nice to offer them some incentive. Um, and, th and this is where you know sometimes your generosity will really pay off. If you don't have one already, it's a really good idea to create a referral scheme. Now, if you're quite new in business and you're just looking at the numbers, it might seem like it's quite a costly number. But actually, if you think of that in terms of your marketing budget, if you put that budget into a referral scheme, you're going to have your existing happy clients referring their friends and family who are going to be you know already half bought into you before they've even met you. That is a much higher quality lead than what you can generate from Facebook or Google Ads. I would rather spend money on that any day over paid advertising. So if you think of it as your marketing budget, then it's actually a very cheap way to acquire you new clients and it is very worthwhile. It will show your clients that you really appreciate their referrals and it will just make them happier and more likely to refer more clients to you. So I hope you found this video useful. I'm sure all of you would have tried some of the things that I've mentioned in the list. But the thing with marketing is that you can't just rely on one strategy at a time. You really should have several strategies going alongside each other. And it's a good idea to think of them in terms of long-term versus short-term strategies and have a combination of each of them. So if you have found this video useful, then make sure you like, comment and tag a friend and do send me suggestions of topics that you'd like me to talk about in the future. I'll see you next time. Thank you.